Greg Strike here, and welcome back to Microscopic Exploration. This could very well be our very first deadly episode. Have you guys ever wondered what would grow in your cooler if you left it sitting out in the sun, sealed up for, I don't know, a month? Well, that's what I did, and I didn't really mean to do that, but I did it. And when I went to open up my cooler the other day, this is what I found. It's not very pretty. But I have to admit, when I first saw it, I was curious to find out what it was. Now I've been Googling this stuff to try to find out exactly what it is. And as far as I can tell, it's disgusting. <laughs> but in all honesty, it's probably some type of mold or fungus. The closest I could find is it's the mold that we make penicillin from. But I really just don't think it is. The pictures really don't match up. So if you guys have any idea as to what this stuff is, or you have any good resources on identifying molds or funguses, I mean fungi, let me know. Until then, let's switch over and look at this stuff under the microscope. So the very first thing I'd like to do here is actually put a picture of the mold in the upper right hand portion just so we can get a better look at it. Uh, and what you'll notice in that picture is that there's actually a yellow portion of the mold which is more of a liquid and then there's a green portion which is more thick and fibrous. Uh, what we're looking here is the yellow uh, mold at 40 times magnification. All right, I'll go ahead and switch over to 100 times magnification here and get that picture out of the corner. Uh, you might notice some air bubbles, like right there. That is actually caused uh, from air being trapped under the cover glass. It's not part of the actual specimen. And this yellow stuff is more of a liquid uh, than the uh, green stuff that we'll see a little later. Let's switch over to 400. Here it is at 400 times magnification. It gets a little more difficult to focus, so please bear with me as I try to keep this in focus for us. Uh, the way I actually prepared these slides is I took the slide and put a drop of water on there, took a toothpick to the yellow and the green mold, uh, separately of course, and put the sample in the drop of water. Then I covered it with the cover glass. Um, generally you actually will use a type of dye, uh, which I actually don't have on hand at the moment. Uh, but use a dye to help bring some contrast to the image, which I, which I wasn't able to do at this time, but I will be getting some of that. Okay, here's the green mystery cooler mold at 40 times magnification. Uh, this is the stuff that's going to be more fibrous, and what we're looking at right now is the sample actually suspended in water, uh, kind of on the outskirts of the main sample. Getting in a little closer here to the main sample, this is where you'll see a lot of the fibers and you can definitely notice the green color under the microscope. Here's a little more of the green mystery cooler mold at 40 times and what you'll notice is like this stuff which appears to be almost gelatin. Okay here it is at 100 times magnification and when you start getting in this close, you'll notice how I can only keep a certain portion of it focused in at a certain time. That's just because of the sensitivity of the focal plane as I move it in and out of focus. I can have only a very small portion focused in at any time because of the sensitivity. You'll also notice uh, on the uh, fibers what almost appears to be some sort of uh, sectioning. Here's a closer look at the gelatin portion. And here it is at 400 times magnification. I apologize, it is difficult to get in focus and I'm not using immersion oil, which I should be doing, which would actually help a lot in this situation. These right here were an interesting sample. I didn't really see much else that looked like uh, this portion uh, in the rest of the sample. Uh, back to immersion oil, what immersion oil does for us is actually uh, it's a oil that matches the refractive index of the glass and as light moves through uh, different mediums with different refractive indexes it bends. It's, much, uh, it's what causes the effect when you put a pencil in a uh, cup of glass and it causes the pencil to look like it's separated. Uh, that's essentially what's happening as the light travels through the glass and then through uh, the air it gets refracted and then it messes up your image. So that's what immersion oil is used for. It actually matches the refractive index. And this is that mold here, uh, the gelatin area. 
Wish we knew what this stuff was. If you guys have any science gurus or biology gurus that can identify this stuff, send them this video so that they can uh, look at it and actually tell us what it is. All right. Well, I don't know about you guys, but that stuff looks much more disgusting with the naked eye than it does under the microscope. And now it's time to reveal last episode's mystery image of the week. We didn't have any winners because apparently it was too difficult. Even though it's a common household thing that you have in your house every single day. This is common household dust. That's right, plain old ordinary dust. <laughs> but to be fair to you guys, I guess every sample of dust you look at is going to look different. So maybe I should put up something a little more simple. Uh, perhaps this. Okay, no, but I'll be a little more better about the images that I choose for the mystery image of the week. So now it's time to reveal this episode's mystery image of the week. Once you take a look at the image, be sure to submit your guesses directly on this video's YouTube page in the comments section. Because remember, the very first person that gets it right will get their name in the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.